Wimbledon is in full swing this week, and with only a few grass court events on both the ATP and WTA tours before it, players don't have that many opportunities to prepare for the most important event of the year. While the women had their final big test last week at Eastbourne, some of the biggest names in the men's game played at the Boodles Challenge, a small invitational event founded by Patricio Ape and held annually at Stoke Park, just outside London. The idea is to create a summer garden party that happens to have world-class tennis going on. And that was the motto when we started, and it has, it has really been embraced by, by the people that come. It's a, it's a wonderful day out, the facilities are fantastic, the tennis is excellent, the food, the hospitality, it, it really works as a summer garden party. At the Boodles, punters enjoy pims, strawberries and bubbly, as well as a little rain, all staples of a classic British summer. But just as at Wimbledon, rain doesn't dampen the enthusiasm for good tennis. After all, the English grass court season is renowned for its impeccable courts and unpredictable weather. It's all part of the charm. And those who endure the showers and unseasonably low temperatures are rewarded with some excellent tennis in this, the 10th edition of the event. This year's main draw included last year's winner, Gaël Monfils, 2002 Wimbledon finalist, David Nalbandian, and 2009 US Open champion, Juan Martín del Potro. Also playing are world number six, David Ferrer, Frenchman Gilles Simon, and Richard Gasquet, Spain's Fernando Vadasco, and Serbian Victor Troitsky. I think it's really good to have exhibition matches like these in your schedule. When you play in a tournament and you lose in the first round, you don't get to play anymore, you can only train. Here, however, you're guaranteed matches and you can be a bit more daring. We do take the matches seriously, but you can try out more tactical things. It's not easy to find good grass courts in the world, so it's good to be able to familiarize yourself with the weather, which is rather unique. The surface is unusual as well, and I think the advantage of playing a few exhibition matches is very important. Gasquet faces more feasts in the opening match. The format of the event is simple. The eight players from the main draw play a quarter-final setup. The four winners advance to the next round, while the losers continue to play in exhibition matches. That way, everybody has a chance to play several times and get used to grass. Your whole body feels different when you play on grass. It's a completely different way of playing. You go from long rallies, to having to react to every point, to being quite aggressive. It's not easy to make the transition from clay to grass. Gasquet gets the better of Monfils in an entertaining match. Argentina's David Nalbandian needed double surgery earlier this year for a hernia and torn adductor muscle. But in his opening match, he looks in great shape and shows his opponent, Viktor Troitsky, why he was once world number three. It's more relaxed than a tournament, but more intense than just training. And in my case, I had this already in my diary, because I've been injured and couldn't play much. And what I really needed was match fitness. Fellow Argentine Juan Martín del Potro announced at the start of the year that he wants to break back into the top ten after missing most of the 2010 season with wrist injury. He's already climbed back to 22nd in the ranking and could be an outside chance for the Wimbledon title. In January, David Ferrer reached the semi-finals at the Australian Open after beating Spanish compatriot Rafael Nadal. 
He's one of the few players to have beaten the world number one this year. The biggest attraction of the week is Novak Djokovic, who plays an exhibition match on Thursday. It was his only grass court match before Wimbledon, and the Serb took just 47 minutes to thrash Gilles Simon 6-1, 6-2. Djokovic has had an impressive year with 41 back-to-back -back wins, but in spite of this phenomenal run, he still remains second in the world ranking. This is as far as I went on the rankings and uh, I'm definitely uh, very satisfied with the way, uh, way I've played in the last uh, six, seven months. Uh, it's, been, it's been the best period of my uh, career, so I'm just trying to keep the momentum going, keep on playing well. Uh, grass court season is very short for all of us, so we are trying to, to get ready for Wimbledon, which is the most important tournament. Djokovic won his second Australian Open in January, but remains very much in the distance when talk turns to the big guns, Roger Federer, Rafa Nadal. I agree that they always uh, raise their, their level of performance, uh, especially in the big events and the Grand Slams. And, I mean, they're great champions, you know, the results uh, that they have achieved uh, in, in the past five, six years, they, they're, they're saying everything. I mean, they're so dominant. Uh, but look, you know, now I think there's, there's Murray, myself, a couple more players that are believing they can, they can, you know, that we can win against uh, Feder and Nadal, and I, I think that's the right mindset. Men's tennis is currently enjoying a golden age with a group of outstanding players at the top of their game. However, they all know it's one thing to break into the top ten and quite another to stand on the hallowed rungs at the top three. Djokovic, uh, Djokovic Rafa, Rafa and Federer are the most consistent players and they've made quite a difference this year. But that's something that's been going on for some time now. As for the rest of us, there is some movement inside the top ten. I think it's a coincidence that there are currently three exceptional players who are in great form. But then there's also Murray, who's just waiting in the wings. It's really a great time for men's tennis. Ferrer reaches the final at Stoke Park, where he faces Nalbandian. Players interrupted three times for rain, giving both players a taste of what's in store at Wimbledon this week. The match is decided by a 10-point tiebreaker after the players win a set each. Victory goes to Ferrer, but for all the players involved, it's the perfect preparation for Wimbledon, the oldest and most prestigious tennis tournament in the world.